Controllers have two big problems in modern shooter games. But they can be fixed. Let me explain. Now whether you like it or not, games have gotten pretty complicated. From advanced movements in games like Call of Duty and Apex Legends, to advanced mechanics in Fortnite and Halo, most games are not just about shooting your gun anymore. You have to be able to aim and shoot while doing different skills at the same time. And the one thing that all these different advanced mechanics have in common is you need to press these buttons which is kind of hard without using your thumbs. You see, while FPS games have evolved a lot in the last 30 years, the controller layout has pretty much stayed the same. So how do the good players you watch on YouTube and Twitch aim and use advanced movements at the same time? <laughs> Okay, so jokes aside, you can do these mechanics on either input. So before you go and throw anything away, let's look at a few different ways you can do them on controller by examining one of the most simple mechanics in nearly every FPS game. Now the reason this movement is so popular is because when you jump while shooting your opponent, you raise your character's hitbox, making it more difficult for your opponent to land high damage chests and headshots. And for most games, the default button to jump is A. So the first strategy people use is this. You can switch jump to any of these buttons, and now you don't have to take your thumb off the analog stick. So if we use L1 for instance, it's now pretty easy to jump during gunfights. But this method is pretty limiting because there are a lot of in-game actions you need to do and you only have four buttons you can press without moving your thumbs after you assign ADS and fire. So there are going to be a lot of trade-offs when deciding your button bindings. And that's why a lot of players use option two. Instead of using the index fingers to ADS and fire, they use their middle fingers. And this allows them to now press every button on the controller without moving their thumbs. So now to do the jump shot, you can press X with your right index finger and still aim and shoot. And not only that, but you can reload and slide and do all kinds of things, which is why this grip or the partial grip is so popular among pro controller players. But for me personally, I find the grip a bit uncomfortable for games that require a lot of actions per minute. I also have some concerns about long-term hand and wrist health, so I've never really tried to use it for long periods of time. The risk is too high for me, and I don't know about you, but I plan to be gaming as an old man. And that's why I use option three. So with back buttons, you can keep a standard controller grip, but now you're able to use your middle and ring fingers to press additional buttons, which makes doing things like the jump shot really easy. Now, there are aftermarket kits to install back buttons to a stock controller, so if you want to get your hands a little bit dirty, you can, but speaking from personal experience after completely ruining controllers in the past, I like to leave this to the professionals. And that's why I'm using the brand new Hyper Signature FPS controller for PS5 and PC. They're the sponsor of this video and sent me the controller to try out and review. And for full disclosure, I do get to keep it and I do have an affiliate code, which I'll share more about in a minute, but I'm such a fan of their products and have been using them for months, so I was the one who originally reached out to partner with them. Now, getting back to the controller, the main features are four reprogrammable rear mechanical buttons, a sport grip on the back plate, and quick triggers and bumpers, all at a really competitive price point. But the first thing to talk about is the overall design. The controller comes in four different color options. Now, I chose the black design because I love the sleek look, and I think the orange glide ring accents give it the perfect amount of character. And the controller just feels great in my hands. They've removed the rumble motors, so the controller feels really light. And this might not seem important, but having to hold less weight during those marathon gaming sessions makes it so much easier to play day after day without getting any hand fatigue, which is perfect for when you feel like avoiding all of your real life responsibilities to play an obscene amount of hours of a new game. Not that I would ever do that. And the sport grip definitely helps the controller feel more secure in my hands. It's flush with the back plate, so there isn't any added bulkiness. And I can really feel a difference in my grip when I compare it to a stock controller. The material feels similar to what's used on the tops of the PS5 analog sticks, so it seems like it's definitely going to hold up over time and not start to wear down. Now, I've been team four back buttons for a long time. I use both my middle and ring fingers when I'm playing, so I use the lowest button configuration that Hyper offers. But there's also another option if you prefer just to use your middle fingers for all of the buttons. And the reason I love having four buttons is because I want to move my thumbs off the analog sticks as little as humanly possible so that I'm ready for a gunfight at any time during the game. 
And having more buttons gives me greater flexibility when I'm choosing what buttons to map. And with the remap feature, if I ever change my mind or want to play a different game, I can easily change the buttons to something different. As for the buttons themselves, they feel really robust. They're a bit on the stiffer side and sound pretty clicky. Clicky, is, is that even a word? But I actually really like this. I like the sound because I know that the button is registered and in my experience, controller buttons tend to loosen up over time. So I'd rather have them start like this than feel soft and eventually stop registering altogether. And now do you remember how I said there are two big problems with the controllers in shooter games? Well, the second problem is the stock triggers on controllers. If you think about it, controller manufacturers have to design them for gamers playing everything from shooters to racing games and to whatever this is. And for some of these games, you need triggers with variable input based on how the button is pressed. But FPS games don't need this. We want our guns to shoot the instant we press the trigger because every millisecond matters in a gunfight. And the quick triggers and bumpers on this controller fix that problem. Instead of the normal buttons, you get switches similar to a mouse click, which reduces the standard trigger pull down to one millimeter. People are rightfully obsessed with getting good ping and having fast connection to the servers during online play. But what's also important is how quickly the inputs from your hand make it to your PC or console. And this is just a personal preference reference, but I like feeling the click of the switches. It just feels more responsive to me than a normal controller when I'm playing the game. And I should also add that the analog sticks and controller face buttons feel the same to me as a normal PS5 controller, so no complaints there. Overall, this controller checks every box for me. With all the features, and especially the price point and delivery time, it competes with every controller on the market. And if you're interested in learning more about the controller, you can check out the link in the description and use code DREAMSTRIKE for an additional 5% off. But I do want to mention that if a pre-built PS5 controller isn't for you, they also have options where you can build your own or even choose from PS4 or Xbox controllers. And my affiliate code will work for these too. And if you want to see how I improved my aim, you can check out this video right here.